let's see Ugly Duckling. See, he's sad because he's all alone and nobody wants him. But on this page, his family hears him crying and they find him. Then the Ugly Duckling is happy because he knows where he belongs. This movie is a fantastic way to learn English because it's packed with real-life conversations, humor and expressions that we use every day. Today we're learning English with Lilo and Stitch. I'm Senia, your real-life English fluency coach, and welcome to our Learn English with TV series channel. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining us. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell down below because every week we create lessons just like this one to help you understand your favorite movies, TV series, and fast-speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. In this scene, you'll meet Lilo, her sister Nani, and the very intense Mr. Bubbles, a social worker who's visiting to check on Lilo. Along the way, you'll look at some interesting vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation that pop up in their conversation. You'll hear the words like simmer for cooking, precarious to describe a risky situation, and come along to talk about progress. All phrases that make your English sound more natural, which you can learn with our exclusive flashcards. As soon as you finish watching the video using your phone, click on the link in the description below and you will be redirected to our Real Life English app. And if you have it downloaded, you will start your vocabulary practice right away with your first free deck. I will show you how it works later in the lesson. So let's watch the clip with the subtitles first, then you will learn all of the most important vocabulary, grammar and pronunciation and at the end of this lesson. You'll take a short quiz by watching the clip one more time without subtitles and answering some of our quiz questions. Uh, wait here. So, lemonade? Do you often leave your sister home alone? No, never. Well, except for just now. Uh, I had to run to the store to get some. You left the stove on while you were out. Chloe! Just a simmer. Mmm, it's coming along great. There you are, honey face. This is Mr. Bubbles. Nice to meet you. Your knuckles say Cobra. Cobra Bubbles. You don't look like a social worker. I'm a special classification. Did you ever kill anyone? We're getting off the subject. In this scene, we meet Mr. Bubbles, a social worker who visits Lilo to check on her living situation. Since the tragic loss of their parents, Nani, her older sister, has been responsible for Lilo's care. Mr. Bubbles wants to confirm that Lilo is in a safe and supportive environment as Nani struggles to balance her responsibilities as a caregiver with her own challenges. Do you often leave your sister home alone? No, never. Oh, well, except for just now. Uh, I had to run to the store to get some. Oh! Mr. Bubbles asks Nani if she always leaves her sister alone. By saying a never except for just now, she wants to say that it was only an exception and it had never happened before. Except for is used to exclude something. And I really want you to practice it with me. I'll give you a situation and you will use except for in your answer. Do you usually reply to emails right away? Have you visited all the tourist attractions in the city? Do you walk your dog every morning? You left the stove on while you were out. Chloe! Just a simmer. Mmm, it's coming along great. <laughs> Now, let's learn some useful vocabulary for the kitchen. So, we see that Nani left the stove on while she was out. To leave the stove on means to keep it working. And what would be the opposite of leaving it on? The opposite would be turning the stove off before going out. 
You might also notice that Mr. Bubbles drops the question word did, which is a common feature of casual speech. Instead of asking, did you leave the stove on? She says, you left the stove on and uses intonation to make it a question. Did I leave the stove on? You left the stove on while you were out. Chloe! Just a simmer. Mmm, it's coming along great. <gasps> when you need to cook something slowly, you set the stove to low heat. Think of making soup. You'd set it to low heat so it gently simmers without boiling over or burning. And I just used the word simmer, as you might have already guessed, to simmer means to cook something on low heat. Simmer gently is a common phrase in recipes. Check out this example. After filling this to the top with water, I'm gonna let it simmer for quite a bit so that the flavors can come out and intensify. Here come along means to turn out well, as she's talking about cooking. It means the food is cooking well and turning out as she hoped. Another example would be if your friends or relatives ask you about your progress in English. You might say, it's really coming along, I'm learning new words every day. Here it means progress and development. Yeah, yeah, coming along nicely. I was cooking just fine. Has it happened to you that you got a chance to practice your English speaking by having a real conversation? And that word that you know you've learned before just doesn't come to you as the moment when you need it the most. I know how frustrating that feels. To be in a conversation and find yourself pausing frequently because you're forgetting all the useful words that you know. That sucks. I've been there myself. This feeling when you know what you want to say, but you just want to be able to express your thoughts as easily as you can do it in your native tongue. Let me tell you, this is exactly what the Real Life app can help you with. As I mentioned, every lesson comes with a deck of flashcards. By practicing just 10-15 minutes daily, you'll be able to transfer these new words from your short term into your long term memory. Plus, with the spaced repetition software that we built into our app, you'll retain vocabulary more effectively by reviewing new words at carefully timed intervals, just when you're about to forget them. I highly recommend you check it out. The app is free to download, just look for Real Life English in the App Store or Google Play, or simply click the link in the description below. It's free to get started, so go and download it now. There you are, honey face. This is Mr. Bubbles. Nice to meet you. Hey, did you notice how he greeted Lilo? He said, nice to meet you, but with a connected speech. When the word ends with the letter T and the next word starts with the letter Y, often they give the CH sound. Like here, meet you becomes meet you. Listen and repeat. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Your knuckles say cobra. Cobra Bubbles. You don't look like a social worker. I'm a special classification. Did you ever kill anyone? We're getting off the subject. If you make a fist, the knuckles are the parts that stick out. So Lilo notices Cobra tattooed on Mr. Bubbles' knuckles. This style of tattooing individual letters on the knuckles is often associated with tough characters, or individuals with a military or street background. Lilo's comment, you don't look like a social worker, reflects her surprise that someone with such a tough, intimidating appearance would be in a helping profession. So, to avoid answering the question about killing someone, Mr. Bubbles says, we're getting off the subject. To get off the subject means to start talking about something else, unrelated to the main topic. In this case, he wanted to talk about Lilo and her living conditions, and not about his background. Oh, sorry, I got a little off the subject there, kids. Now, do you remember Lilo's follow-up question? She asked, did you ever kill anyone? A similar pattern to what we just described, but in this case, it's a combination of letters D plus Y that gives us a J sound. Did you? Listen and repeat. Did you ever kill anyone? Did you ever 
kill anyone. Let's watch the rest of the scene where Lilo almost screws it up, describing Nani's way of taking care of her, which leaves Mr. Bubbles quite unsatisfied. Let's talk about you. Are you happy? I'm adjusted. I eat four food groups and look both ways before crossing the street and take long naps and get disciplined. Disciplined? Yeah, she disciplines me real good. Sometimes five times a day. With bricks. Bricks? Uh-huh, in a pillowcase. Okay, that's enough sugar for you. Why don't you run along, you little cutie? <laughs> the other social workers just thought she was a scream. Let me illuminate to you the precarious situation in which you have found yourself. I am the one they call when things go wrong. And things have indeed gone wrong. Call me next time you're left here alone. Yep. In case you're wondering, this did not go well. You have three days to change my mind. Let's talk about you. Are you happy? I'm adjusted. I eat four food groups and look both ways before crossing the street and take long naps and get disciplined. Disciplined? If you move to a new school and quickly make friends and feel comfortable, you're well adjusted. When someone says, I'm adjusted or I'm well adjusted, they usually mean they're emotionally and socially stable, able to cope with daily life and generally doing fine. <laughs> Oh, Bart, I, I know you're still getting adjusted here. Tell you what, we'll do whatever you want to do. By saying, I eat four food groups, Lilo is humorously trying to prove she's well cared for and healthy. In the context of nutrition, the four food groups is a classic way to categorize basic food types, which traditionally include dairy, protein, fruits and vegetables, and grains. Taking a nap is having a short sleep during the day, usually after lunch. By watching Nana making signs behind the social worker's back, we understand that the whole thing is scripted and they had been practicing before. Everything was going well up until this point when something went wrong. Disciplined? Yeah, she disciplines me real good. Sometimes five times a day. With bricks. Bricks? Uh-huh, in a pillowcase. When kids are disciplined, they receive punishment for bad behavior. For example, they might be disciplined by not being allowed to watch TV for a day. However, Lila takes it to the extreme, misreading Nani's hand gestures. She says that Nani disciplines her with bricks in a pillowcase. This is a pillowcase, a soft fabric cover for a pillow. But imagine it filled with bricks heavy building materials used for constructing walls. It's no wonder that Mr. Bubbles was deeply concerned and strongly dissatisfied with this claim. I run a house of discipline. The boy will be disciplined and disciplined severely. Good day. Okay, that's enough sugar for you. Why don't you run along, you little cutie? <laughs> Trying to save the situation, Nani asks Lilo to run along. This is a friendly way to tell someone to leave or go play. If a parent is chatting with a friend and their child is hanging around, they might say, run along and play with your toys. Uh, this might take a while, kid. Why don't you and your buddy run along? Bye, buddy. Notice how she starts her sentence. Why don't you run along, you little cutie? Why don't you run along? So she doesn't actually ask why, but instead it is a polite request to do so. For example, a why don't you take a break suggests in a friendly way that the person should consider taking a break. Why don't you run along, you little cutie? <laughs> the other social workers just thought she was a scream. Thirsty? Let me illuminate to you the precarious situation in which you have found yourself. That's an interesting idiomatic use of the word scream. Here it means to be very funny or entertaining. So Nana is basically saying that other social workers found Lilo very funny. Well, my friend Joan always orders them for me. They're usually sweeter. 
She's a scream. She lives in the city. If you're confused about a math problem, a teacher can illuminate it by breaking it down into simple steps. So, to illuminate means to explain or make something clear. Let me illuminate to you the precarious situation in which you have found yourself. A precarious situation is a situation that's unstable or risky. If you're standing on the edge of a cliff, that's a precarious spot. You could lose balance and fall. Mr. Bubbles uses this to mean their situation isn't very safe or stable. This looks kind of precarious. I am the one they call when things go wrong. And things have indeed gone wrong. In case you're wondering, this did not go well. Imagine baking a cake, but you forget to add sugar. The cake would taste terrible. Something definitely went wrong. When something goes wrong, it doesn't go as planned or fails. Mr. Bubble says, it didn't go well. It's the same as saying it went wrong. So if something goes well, it happens successfully or smoothly. You have three days to change my mind. He then kindly gives Nani another chance, saying that he'll return in three days and might reconsider his decision or change his mind. This means there is a possibility he will come to another conclusion next time, provided the situation improves. Let's go find him and change his mind. Oh, some minds won't be changed, Jacob. That was a fun lesson. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Now, let's test your comprehension by watching the clip one more time, this time without subtitles, and answering some of the quiz questions that we prepared for you. Well, except for just now, uh, I had to run to the store to get some... Ah! You left the stove on while you were out. Chloe! Just a simmer. Mmm, it's coming along great. Ah! What does it mean, it's coming along great? It tastes good, it is soon to be ready, it's gonna be as good as expected. You don't look like a social worker. I'm a special classification. Did you ever kill anyone? We're getting off the subject. Let's talk about you. Are you happy? If someone says, we're getting off the subject, what are they trying to say? They want to change the subject to something more interesting? They stopped focusing on the main topic? The conversation is becoming too personal. I'm adjusted. I eat four food groups and look both ways before crossing the street and take long naps and get disciplined. Disciplined? Yeah, she disciplines me real good. Which word is closest in meaning to the verb to discipline? Organize, punish, relax. Okay, that's enough sugar for you. Why don't you run along, you little cutie? <laughs> the other social workers just thought she was a scream. Let me illuminate to you the precarious situation in which you have found yourself. I am the one they call when things go wrong. And things have indeed gone wrong. Call me next time you're left here alone. Yep. In case you're wondering, this did not go well. You have three days to change my mind. Thank you for learning with us and please remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell down below to follow all of our newest lessons. And you may also practice new words and expressions that you learned today with the flashcards on our Real Life English app. As I mentioned, you will find the link that will redirect you to the app and to this deck right in the description below. Just use your smartphone to get started. It's the easiest way to make these words stick with you forever. 
If you're staying here with us on YouTube channel, check out this lesson next. This is not gonna work, little chef. I'm gonna lose it if we do this anymore. We gotta, we gotta figure out something else. Something that doesn't involve any biting or nipping or running up and down my body with your little rat feet. The biting, no. Scampering, no. No scampering or stirring. Understand, little chef? 